Hey guys, what's up? It's Garrett. I'm here with the uh, truck I'm painting. I told you I probably wasn't going to make many videos, but uh, I'm going to make at least this one. So I've got pretty much the entire truck uh, scuffed where the paint wasn't peeling and sanded where the paint was peeling and needed work. And I've got a lot of it primed and uh, I've still got to tape up the glass, uh, but otherwise it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, I wanted to show you the paints that I use on this thing. Now, um, some of you may have heard of uh, Rapco. Uh, Rapcoparts.com sells paint and they do a really good job uh, matching the paint code to the original FS codes. Um, I order paint from them most of the time um, because when I'm doing a paint job for a customer I want it to match 100%. So what I got for this uh, was, and I, I guess I should mention, Rapco uses uh, Gillespie coatings. They, and they do mix their own paint as far as I know. And uh, this is the can it comes in. Now this, I'm using the semi-gloss uh, for this. You know in Viet, on Vietnam era trucks, they came either semi-gloss or the flat um, 24087. Yeah, I, I did actually have to look on the can to so uh, I got a few cans of that. I also ordered a can of brown because I'm going to need one later for another project. Um, anyway, it's good paint. Uh, it holds up in the weather fairly well. It does tend to fade or chalk if it's left out in the sun continuously over a few years. Um, it's an alkyde enamel. It's not an oil-based paint. Um, well, I don't know. Alkyd may be oil based. I don't know. I'm not a paint chemist or whatever. Uh, but it's a good paint and they use it on engines and all kinds of shit. So uh, it's an industrial coating. Um, the paint that I get locally, which uh, comes from a Pasco, I'll show you one of their cans over here. I actually have my own paint code because they custom mix it. Um, actually, a couple of them. So. Uh, if you go to an auto paint and supply company, you get a diamond coat, which is their alkyd enamel, and it's PPG. You're looking for dark Garrett OD green or dark Garrett flat gunstock. Yes, my name is in their paint code in their system because um, I had them mix it and mix it until they got the shades right for my taste. Now, the only truck I've got around here right now it still has those paints on it is my deuce and this paint actually is faded over a few years um, but the paint it looks pretty good if you look at the door this is the last thing I touched up and that was probably eight months ago ten months ago and if you look at that paint and then look this is stock um, military 383 Kark so it's pretty close um, being as this truck has been out fading in the weather for a few years, actually, um, long enough for a little bit of rust. Uh, but the point is, the paint, it matches pretty well. That's why I got my name on it, because I had them spend quite a bit of time. And the same for the brown. If you look at the brown here, and you look at the brown over here, it's uh, pretty close to the same. It's a little more like a purplish tint to this than to mine, but... Uh, it did vary over the years, different manufacturers of military paints and stuff. You know, it doesn't always match, but you got to get close. Um, so, what I do for prepping these things, if the paint isn't peeling or anything like that, um, I'll go over it just to knock the shine off of the coating with uh, 3M red Scotch-Brite pads. And... Yeah, okay, you can't read any of the writing on that anymore. Ah, here's another one. Um, yeah. Anyway, it is actually just 3M red scotch Brite. so. Uh, you're not trying to take the paint off. You're just going and knocking the shine off. Um, so the paint has something to stick to. Uh, you, If you go and you sand it with like 80 grit or 60 grit, then... You'll see those scratches in it, even with the new paint on. Uh, if you lay the paint on thick enough to fill those scratches, 
then it'll peel or crack or delaminate later. So uh, you can either go and sand it with 80 grit or 60 grit, then 80 grit, then like 120 grit, then 240, and then 400, and then you can paint it. Or you can just scotch bright it and wash it off and then paint it. Or you do like me, scotch bright it, wipe it down with some rags and some xylene to get the dust off, and then shoot it. Um, I have done some where I've sandblasted entire vehicles down to bare metal and then done primer on them um, and then gone back and with and done paint uh, but the sandblasting man you can never get rid of the sand once it's down uh, and all it does is get tracked right into the shop so keep that in mind if you're going to do anything I'd suggest soda blasting because the soda Wherever you do it, it will keep the vegetation from coming back, and it actually does, like, get into the dirt and go away. So, um, case in point, Gillespie coatings, scotch Bright, don't sand. Clean it up good after you're done doing preparation. Tape off all your shit, and uh, have fun, you know. I'm not going to show you how to do spraying and the spray techniques and how to set the gun because there's a hundred million videos of that out there on Facebook or not Facebook uh, YouTube oh, all this shit uh, and in fact if you don't if you've never sprayed before and you're looking at doing it check out Eastwood uh, Eastwood has a lot of good how-to videos and how to use their products and you know they sell the same products everybody else does just with their brand on it uh, and they're all over YouTube uh, they're pretty complete instructional videos for those of you who are beginners in this stuff. Yes, there are better ways to do this than what I'm doing this, but I'm doing this really cheap for this guy as a favor because he does a lot for the veterans, and I don't have time to go and sandblast it down to bare metal and start over with epoxy primer and all that and take everything apart, so I'm not doing that. I'm doing it cheap, and I'm doing it quick, and he's still going to get a decent job. So... Uh, I'm going to try to get you another video when this is either complete or being close to being completed. If there's anything I've forgotten that I think is important, I'll make another video about that. Uh, keep checking back in. I've got a few more videos that are already made up waiting to post. I, I don't want to, like, throw out all my content there in a day or two because it takes me a while to make these videos and, and figure out what order to put them in sometimes. So, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you want to see more of these videos, if you like the video, hit the like button, please, please. It helps me a lot. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And it is really, really hard to operate a touchscreen when you're wearing latex gloves. And this thing's been giving me problems anyway. So let's see. Let's try this without a glove. <laughs>